Thank you very much for the introduction. So yes, as the title says, this will be essentially a heuristic uh, approach based on the Schrodinger problem to uh, macroscopic fluctuations for uh, lattice, lattice gases. So uh, probably some of you heard about Schrodinger problem already yesterday afternoon in the Narmont Saint Jean uh, 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 seminar, uh, but his approach was more analytic. Mine uh, is more probabilistic, uh, and because of the application we have in mind, uh, namely which are oriented to uh, particle systems and in particular lattice gases. Uh, so, um, uh, oh, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, we don't okay. Know. We, so uh, the base question, the, so the question which is at the very heart of this um, talk is the following. So, uh, which, uh, so given a particle system and given two observations of such a system at two different times, what is the most likely evolution between them? This means that uh, knowing the uh, dynamic of, uh, of a particle system, uh, its initial distribution and conditionally on, the, uh, on a possibly rare uh, final configuration, uh, how can we, we want to determine the most likely evolution that led from our initial configuration to the unpredicted and unexpected final one? And uh, uh, to answer this question, uh, I will rely on what is called Schrodinger problem, which was formulated in 1931 by Schrodinger for a very specific case of a particle system which, however, is quite unsatisfying for a, for a, from a physical standpoint. Uh, so for this reason, I will also uh, briefly discuss uh, a more recent uh, step forward taken a few years ago, which is the mid-field shredding the problem. And base, uh, based on this, two, uh, on this uh, solid and rigorous background, I will uh, finally uh, talk about uh, a heuristic uh, formulation, a uh, heuristic Schrodinger problem for uh, lattice gases. So let me first start with the original Schrodinger problem. Uh, so the, the second is the following. We consider n uh, independent and identically distributed uh, particles, which evolve according to this uh, diffusive SDE, and we sample them at the initial time uh, with respect to the um, uh, uniform measure, so the invariant measure for the SDE. We denote by uh, mu tn the empirical distribution at, at time t, and well, then by classical large deviations and Sanoff theorem, we know that the probability that the initial configuration is uh, uh, close to mu is exponentially small as a function of the Boltzmann entropy of mu with respect to the uh, invariant measure n. And the same for the final configuration. Again, by virtue of this SDE, if we have uh, an initial configuration close to mu, we expect that the final one will be close to pt mu, where pt is the uh, Markov semigroup associated to the SDE. So if instead the final configuration is close to nu with nu possibly different from pt mu, then the question addressed already in 1931 by uh, Schrodinger was uh, essentially a, a large deviation uh, question uh, and was ex exactly the one I already uh, presented you uh, on the previous slide. So what is the most likely evolution between mu and the unexpected final configuration nu? And to answer this question, uh, well, again, by sign of uh, like argument, we can uh, look at the joint event, uh, consider its probability, and prove that uh, this uh, probability is again exponentially small. Uh, but this time, the function that determines the smallness of the probability is no longer the Boltzmann entropy, it's something more complicated. Uh, is, this, uh, is the optimal value of this uh, minimization problem, which is the uh, Schrodinger problem. So it is an entropy minimization problem uh, where we minimize the Boltzmann entropy uh, among uh, all path measures uh, with good initial and final uh, marginals and uh, with respect to uh, the low of, our, uh, of any of these uh, particle x, since they are identically distributed. Uh, well, answering, uh, solving this question, uh, uh, this problem answered this question since the desired uh, uh, more likely evolution between new in, and new is nothing but the marginal flow of the unique minimizer of, uh, uh, of this variational problem. 
But there is uh, much more to say about the Schrodinger problem. Uh, since uh, it's uh, the marginal flow, the unique solution that from now on we shall call uh, Schrodinger Bridge, has a very uh, strong structure. So uh, it is the product of a forward uh, uh, diffusion equation and a backward one for suitable and uniquely determined F function Ft and Gt. And uh, by means of these functions, we can also introduce uh, dual variables, phi t and psi t, which are linked to uh, the density of the shredding bridge through uh, uh, forward and backward Fokker-Planck uh, equation. And moreover, if we look at the time evolution of the dual variables, they solve a uh, hamilton jacobi bellman equation. So uh, this, uh, these considerations, these observations, were at the base of a, first, were first observed by Mikami, uh, for the Brownian motion, uh, I mean, uh, for the Schrodinger problem associated with the Brownian motion, and then later extended by Gentil, Leonard, and Ripani to, uh, for the einstein nuremberg process, and later by myself uh, and Gigi uh, to any uh, symmetric diffusion on uh, manifolds, but actually far beyond also on measured measure space, on suitable measured measure spaces. So, this, uh, this from this consideration, we can reinterpret the Schrodinger problem as a control problem with constraint given by forward or backward uh, Fokker-Planck equation. But as already anticipated from a physical point of view, this model is quite unsatisfying, unsatisfying since the particles are assumed to be uh, independent. So in order... Uh, this motivated uh, Bakov, Comforti, Gentil, and Leonard to introduce uh, uh, a sort of interaction uh, between the particles. So to replace uh, the underlying dynamics from this SDE to the following one. And uh, in this case, the empirical measures associated to this particle system still solve, uh, still satisfy a large deviation principle. <laughs> and, and again, the rate function is reads as an entropy minimization problem, again, a Boltzmann entropy minimization problem, even if the reference measure due to this uh, interaction uh, potential W, this interaction term W, uh, is more complicated since uh, uh, the reference measure depends on the argument uh, Q in the following way. So uh, in the reference measure is the low of the unique strong solution of the mckin vlasov SDE uh, written here below which essentially is, uh, so is the dynamic driving the particle system with uh, initial condition mu, while here the optimal one uh, essentially has to solve the same dynamics, but with both uh, initial and final uh, uh, constraint. So uh, with this change uh, uh, of the underlying dynamics, uh, the system becomes, uh, I mean, become more complicated. We lose in particular the product form of the Schrodinger bridge, but still many analogies still persist. In particular, uh, we can read this mean field Schrodinger problem again as a control problem, and the optimal control is of gradient type, and uh, the function psi appearing here is again linked to uh, the optimal uh, uh, marginal flow through a uh, Fokker-Planck-like equation. And the PDE solved by psi t is again a uh, Hamilton Jacobi of Hamilton Jacobi Bellman type up to this extra term, uh, which complicates somehow the, the expression. And again, if we do a time reversal, we uh, obtain a completely analogous and symmetric system. And the dual variables are related, are related together by this expression, which again extends what was written before for the classic Schrodinger problem, since we add this, uh, the gradient of the pairing potential. So uh, uh, let me now move to the, uh, to the Schrodinger problem for lattice gases, motivated by, this, uh, by the consideration expressed so far. So the aim is to uh, define and study a Schrodinger problem uh, associated to a uh, stochastic lattice gas. So uh, here the main quantities that will appear from now on are the uh, hydrodynamic current, uh, J, capital J, the mobility chi, the diffusion coefficient uh, D. For simplicity, we assume no uh, external field. And uh, these quantities are linked together by this identity 
and by this called Einstein's relation, where a uh, small f is the uh, free energy. In the, classic, in the case of the classical Schrodinger problem, f uh, rho is nothing but uh, uh, rho log rho. And uh, so these quantities are all provided by the physical model we are considering, and particular and relevant examples covered by uh, this abstract uh, framework are the simple exclusion process, zero range process, but there are many others, like for instance, Laubach Havasaki dynamics, and again, many others. Uh, and okay, uh, heuristically, but uh, in many concrete examples also rigorously, we know that uh, as the number of particles uh, goes to infinity, the empirical distribution of uh, our uh, stochastic lattice gas um, still uh, uh, satisfy a large deviation principle, again, as in the previous uh, cases. Uh, and they converge to the uh, so-called hydrodynamic limit, so the solution of this continuity equation. And the rate function that uh, quantifies the, the fluctuation, the deviation from the hydrodynamic limit uh, has this, uh, this form. So it is a sort of L2, uh, weighted L2 norm of uh, the velocity field of the trajectory we are, co we are considering. Uh, with respect to the optimal one uh, given by the solution of this uh, of the continuity equation, with uh, once the uh, marginal constraints are fixed. Well, uh, we, having uh, um, a rate function, the Schrodinger problem is nothing but the uh, minimization of such a rate function among all solutions of the continuity equation uh, uh, with. Uh, satisfying the initial and final constraint. And, uh, okay, let me just stress once more that from uh, the argument is purely uh, heuristic. Uh, what is not difficult to see is that this term, uh, which appeared in the previous rate function here, uh, for, uh, along the optimal solution has to be uh, of uh, gradient type, so that, uh, again, it is possible to rewrite the, this uh, Schrodinger problem as a control problem, and the optimal um, control has to satisfy this uh, condition together with uh, uh, marginal ones. And using Einstein's relation, it is possible to rewrite this PDE in, as uh, the last line here, and so we recognize once more uh, Fokker-Planck-like uh, PDE, while the solution, the equation for the psi is again of uh, hamilton jacobi bellman type, but we can already uh, remark that there is a, I mean, despite the analogy, so the fact that the PDEs are very similar to the previous one, there is an important, a crucial difference, which is the uh, nonlinear the, the non dependence on uh, rho. Both uh, on both sides, due to the no, uh, the mobility chi and the diffusion coefficient d. Nonetheless, we can still perform a time reversal, and uh, which leads to uh, again uh, to another system of PDEs for the reverse uh, dual variable uh, phi. And again, uh, the system we have is uh, symmetric to the previous one, and the dual variables are related together by uh, this uh, identity, which is the generalization to the case of uh, lattice gases of what I uh, wrote before, which was uh, so in the case of uh, the case of the mean field. Uh, the classical Schrodinger problem is just. Uh, uh, phi plus psi equal logarithm. For the mean field, there is also this extra term. While for the Schrodinger problem on lattice gases, uh, it involves the uh, derivative of the free energy. And uh, everything we get, of course, is consistent with, uh, with the previous examples. Just taking, for instance, k chi equal the identity, uh, we recover the classical Schrodinger problem. But uh, this non-linear uh, non-linearity here in rho suggests that uh, um, there is a, an important change in uh, in the geometry of the that we have to uh, put on the Wasserstein space. So this uh, connects somehow the theory of particle system also to uh, to its geometric aspects on the Wasserstein space. Um, to be more precise. Uh, 
the classical and uh, in the classical and the mean field Schrodinger problem, we uh, pointed out before that uh, the uh, rho t and the uh, optimal uh, dual variable psi are linked together by Fokker Planck like equations. And uh, a proper rescaling of the time horizon t, so from zero t, capital T to uh, zero one, which by the way also uh, allows to interpret the parameter capital T no longer as a time horizon, but uh, as a temperature parameter. So after a suitable rescaling, uh, when capital T goes to zero, the, both PD is reduced to just linear continuity equation. Uh, so that Schrodinger bridges converge to uh, Wasserstein geodesic, since it is well known that uh, Wasserstein geodesics uh, uh, are linked uh, through continuity equation via the uh, formula. And uh, so that uh, for both the classical and the mean field Schrodinger problem, it is natural to endow P2 with the so-called autometric, which uh, is uh, briefly described here. Uh, instead, in the case of the Schrodinger problem on lattice gases, rho t and the dual variable psi are linked by this nonlinear uh, PD that even after uh, rescaling and in the limit, uh, capital T goes to zero, uh, here, the right-hand side vanishes, and that's okay, but the nonlinearity remains on the left-hand side, so that in the end, we have a nonlinear uh, continuity equation solved by the, uh, in the limit. And this suggests that we have to replace the Wasserstein distance with uh, the uh, class of transport distances introduced by Dolbeau, Nassaré, and Savaré by a Benamou-Brenier-like formula, but with a nonlinear continuity equation constraint. Plus, of course, the, the marginal mu and nu that I omitted. Well, uh, okay. Uh, with this, uh, so okay, we have uh, already a, a geometric uh, change which is uh, crucial in the model. And moreover, another geometric aspect uh, which is uh, intimately connected to uh, Schrodinger problem is uh, the convexity of the Boltzmann entropy along Schrodinger bridges, which is. Uh, which can be directly proved relying on Otto calculus, uh, since the first and second derivative of the entropy uh, involve uh, uh, gradient and Hessian of the of the Boltzmann entropy. But uh, so uh, the link with uh, Otto geometry is uh, already encoded in the proof, but it has also uh, const import this uh, property has important consequences on the level of uh, at the level of functional inequalities, for instance, and. Uh, also quantitative and optimal uh, sharp estimates for, uh, in the case uh, of the long time regime. So as capital T goes to infinity. In the case of the Schrodinger problem on lattice gases, uh, due to uh, still, still missing uh, replacement of the Otto metric on the, uh, associated with the dolbeau nazaré savaré distances, uh, we cannot make rigorous uh, the, the argument, uh, the, the convexity of the, of the, uh, of the what replaces the, the entropy, which is the so-called quasi-potential defined here, along uh, Schrodinger bridges. Uh, still, I mean, we can, uh, we find this as condition, which are inspired by uh, McCann and Carillo de Zimis and Slavichev, but uh, I mean, it should be, uh, I mean, if it is possible to uh, develop, to find a suitable uh, metric associated with uh, the dolbona savare uh, savare uh, distance, it should be possible to reformulate uh, this condition in terms of such a metric, as it is, for instance, uh, in the case of on the Wasserstein space, where the Macan condition can be naturally interpreted in terms of gradient Hessian, so uh, of differential objects. So with this, I uh, conclude and I thank you for your attention.